prices uh, across the market, Julia? Friday, it looks like the Australian market is just playing a little bit of catch up to the US performance overnight. Now, while the US looks relatively flat, of course, the US bit has been closed for two days this week. And while the US stock market has been closed, the Australian market's gained 1% there. So we, we are seeing a bit of a rebalancing of the Australian market performance to uh, the US stock market, which of course is the biggest in the world. So our market's seeing red across the board. In fact, if I bring up a market map, it will show you in green any stocks increasing and in red any stocks decreasing. And you can see it's pretty much red across the board. Every single sector is trading lower. The worst being the industrial space, but the best uh, sectors are the uh, property as well as the utilities and the banks today. And that's in line with what we saw in the US. We did see a flat result, but we saw the banks and utility stocks doing quite well on the US markets. There are a few bright spots on the Aussie share market today. One of them is just over here. Uh, these are the gold stocks. We're seeing Newcrest Mining, Regis Resources all gaining ground. But altogether, it's been a pretty weak start for the Australian share market. But the big data point to be watching today are the China PMI numbers for October. And they're released at 12 p.m. Sydney time. And if we have a look at those numbers, we are expecting to see a read of 50.3. So in that space of expansion in manufacturing, and it does follow hot on the heels of the flash PMI numbers that we saw last week which stood at a three-month high and that would support what the market's thinking at the moment and that is that we have seen Chinese growth bottoming out in the third quarter we should see an improvement from that 7.4 percent GDP growth that we saw in uh, Q3 so altogether a pretty soft start to the Australian share market but we'll be watching those China PMI numbers coming up soon let's talk 10 network uh, we've got shares pushing lower now well, they were off uh, now just flat at 28 cents a large uh, parcel 10% of the company changing hands at a discount as well. Is that implying that whoever was selling is uh, wanting to uh, get out uh, and not just sort of play around with things? What do you make of it? Often when you do have a look at a large parcel of shares like this, a 7.8% uh, parcel of shares, it is very difficult to shift on market. And if you were to sell, try and sell that amount on market today, you would receive probably a much lower price than 27 cents. So in uh, because it's such a large parcel of shares, it lo looks like an off-market agreement has been made there. It is a big parcel, 7.8%, done at 27 cents. And if we have a look at that price, it's just half a cent away from the all-time record low of 26 and a half cents. Of course, there's a number of billionaires on TENS register, so a bit of speculation on who could be behind uh, the buying of that 7.8% stake. Now, it does come, as TENS says, that it'll probably complete a sale of its iCorp uh, outdoor media unit today. Now, O Media has come back with a revised offer. Initially, on the 20th of July, they had offered $120 million plus $25 million uh, after three years, so a total of $145 million. They've reduced that offer to $98 million plus another $15 million in uh, three years' time. So that's a reduction of about 22%. Of course, we know that 10 needs to pay down debt, and that's really what it's going to do with the proceeds of this sale. But it also means that the, the speculation around capital raising is likely to die down, and it gives 10 the opportunity to be able to invest in content, which it really needs to do to stem that tide of uh, the loss of advertising revenue. So uh, altogether, this should be a positive for 10 shares. Of course, since um, the deal fell through, we'd, we've seen 10 shares just absolutely slumping down to that record low of 26 and a half cents but it looks like today the shares not reacting too much to that I Corp media share uh, sale probably a little bit of speculation given that there are some conditions attached to that sale BT shares they are down nearly three percent two dollars 16 after the full year results came through we're going to be speaking to the CEO shortly Julia would love to get your thoughts on the result it has been another difficult year for BT and they have come out with a full year results and the cash profit has been below our expectations. We were expecting to see a profit result of $42.4 million but we've seen cash profit coming in at $41.5 million. Now this is a pure investment manager and of course it's majority owned by Westpac as well as controlled by Westpac and one of the biggest transactions for BT was uh, in October 2011 where it acquired Joe Hambro. Now this is a UK investment uh, manager and effectively this acquisition doubled the size of BT. Unfortunately since that acquisition what we've really seen are some weak inflows coming through from uh, that Joe Hamburg uh, 
Hambro acquisition. So unfortunately, that's been a little bit disappointing. But in the last few months, we've seen some solid market results, and that does bode well for the sector. However, what we want to start seeing in this space are some positive net inflows of money coming through the door. We've also heard from Perpetual today, and uh, Perpetual shares are being sold down after they said that their first half profit is likely to be quite a flat result. So while we have seen the market improving over the last few months, it does still look like it's quite difficult for a lot of those investment managers out there on the market. Having said that, one of the investment managers bucking the trend today is Magellan Financial. And now, this is a stock that's been doing fantastically well over the last 52 weeks, really bucking that weakness in that funds management space. And that stock, one of the best performers on the market today. Juliana, great.